What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Bearded Fortech here. If you're new here, please consider hitting subscribe. Oh, and by the way, if you guys want a free t-shirt, all you got to do is go to the merchandise store, order a box of gloves or a zero drive ratchet, and then go to the t-shirts and add that to your cart and you'll get a free t-shirt with your order. So a lot of you guys have asked me, how does the cylinder deactivation work on a 5.0 2021 and up? And can you turn it off? So we're going to get into that right now. So this one's a 2023. There's a solenoid, excuse me. There's a solenoid there. And then there's one back there. You can see it easier on this side. There's one there. And then there's that one back there. So what happens is at certain engine RPMs, certain load, certain throttle, temperature, stuff like that, uh, cylinder, one yeah so it's this one one and four six and seven will shut off it closes the valves and kills the injectors but there is still air trapped inside the combustion chamber which gives it like a spring effect so it helps the piston still move up and down since there's no combustion going on now it's going to be running off a of two three um five and eight and soon as it needs more engine power or anything like that it'll turn back on now you can't even tell that it does it and what we're going to do is we're going to go for a ride actually the before i do that the rocker arms in there you guys might have seen in the teardown video where the rocker arms on a cylinder deactivation they have a spring inside of them and the hydraulic lash duster goes up inside of it when it does that oil pressure pushes a pin and it locks it so now the camshaft is just spinning over the roller and it won't push the rocker down, which keeps the valves closed. When the oil pressure is released from it, the pin backs off, That's, they call it a plunger, it backs off and then allows the spring to move. So when the camshaft rolls over it, it'll actually push it down and open the valves. Um, I do believe I have a video from the Ford training back when I did all that. Um, system uses four cylinder deactivation solenoids. Two solenoids in the right cylinder head to deactivate cylinders one and four, and two solenoids in the left cylinder head to deactivate cylinders six and seven. During operation at partial load, four cylinders can be deactivated hydraulically. This reduces the fuel consumption and emissions of the engine. If only minimal engine power is required, the system stops the gasoline injection and valve actuation. The connection between the camshaft and the intake and exhaust valves of cylinders 1, 4, 6, and 7 are interrupted by the camshaft carrier and special rocker arms using engine oil pressure. The PCM calculates the optimal time using the engine speed. The PCM actuates the solenoids to deactivate the cylinders. The solenoid controls the oil pressure for actuating a spring-loaded plunger in the rocker arm. When the solenoid is actuated, it applies engine oil pressure to the plunger in the rocker arm, pushing it back and releasing the freewheel mechanism of the rocker arm. When the cam of the camshaft presses against the rocker arm, it is pressed downwards, but without compressing the valve spring and actuating the valve. If the required engine power increases again, the PCM deactivates the solenoids, which reactivates the cylinders. The solenoid restricts oil pressure to the plunger in the rocker arm, allowing the plunger to move forward, preventing the rocker arm from freewheeling. When the cam of the camshaft presses against the rocker arm, it is pressed downwards, compressing the valve spring and actuating the valve. But you can also tell when it does it while you're driving down the road if you have an exhaust. This one does have an exhaust on it. It has a Flowmaster flow effects. So hopefully you'll be able to hear what's going on. And I'll point out when it does it. And then I'll show you three different ways that you can deactivate that while you're going down the road. Um, still working on the four scan thing to try to find the address in the PCM so we can fully deactivate it. But I'll give you three ways that you can turn it off because I know 
cylinder deactivation as a touchy subject with some people. Some people like it, some people don't. That's fine, that's a matter of opinion. It doesn't really bother me either way. Um, sometimes I'll, it really doesn't bother me at all. Um, this is a completely, this is a dual overhead, dual overhead cam engine, so it's not a push rod, so it works, it's the same concept, but works different than like, like the five threes or the Hemi's and all that stuff. But uh, without further ado, let's get in the truck, we'll go for a ride, and hopefully the microphone will pick up when it does it. And then I'll also point at the camera or whatever to let you know when it does do it. And then I'll show you how to turn it off. All right, so we're sitting in the truck. I'm at idle right now. Now it just idled down. We'll go for a little drive. And when I hear it do it, I'll let you know. Right now, it's still on all eight. Downshift, it's still on all eight. Hopefully, you guys can hear the exhaust. It'd be perfect if you can hear it so you know what's going on. So I'm going to try to be quiet so the microphone can pick it up. Not so much road noise. Right. Doing about 35 miles an hour, 36. Especially if you have an exhaust. Back on eight. So I'm gonna go up here, I'm gonna turn around, and I'm gonna show you how you can keep it from doing that 
said the three ways that I know of. I just did it again. Three ways that I know of to keep it from doing that. Because I know a lot of people, they want to ride with all eight cylinders. And that's cool. I get it. I know there's going to be some comments of cylinder deactivation is trash. It does this. It does that. Matter of opinion. Fine. Everybody has an opinion. Back on eight. So... I'm not saying it's good. I'm not saying it's bad. This is just showing you what it sounds like or trying to let you hear what it sounds like and then going to show you how you can keep it from doing that. So let me get turned around and we will go from there. All right, one way you can do it, come down here to drive mode. Turn it all the way to the right. Put it on sport. sport does is it keeps it all eight cylinders all the time the thing is you're going to be in a higher rpm range all the time there i have it 60 miles an hour in seventh gear and it's going to stay right there in seventh gear until i give it more throttle to go up to 70 miles an hour or 80 miles an hour I think I had it at 80 miles an hour once in sport mode and it was at uh, ninth gear. But to get around that, you can just push that manual button and then push it up in the 10th gear with the button on the side and then hit manual again. And it'll keep it there. It'll keep it up in ninth or 10th gear. So that's one way to do it, put it in sport mode. And I know people don't want to ride around in high RPMs all the time. That's just going to burn through what fuel mileage you do get. Um, way number two, same drive mode, you're going to turn it to the left twice, and that puts you in eco, excuse me, I don't want eco, three times, put you in tow haul mode, tow haul mode, we'll keep it on all eight cylinders all the time. That it's going to keep your RPMs in a different range as well. Not as aggressive as sport mode, but you hear it kind of winding out a little bit. So you don't want to ride around in, in uh, tow haul mode all the time either. So let me switch it back over to normal and you just do that by now I'm back in normal mode. You'll see it shift. One of the easiest ways I found to do it while riding around in normal mode is let me get back out on this highway and I'll show you. So this is way number three. have to upshift it 
or you can just hit the button. Let it ship on its own. So there's the three ways that I found to do it. Sport mode, that's gonna keep it in eight cylinders all the time, but it's gonna keep it really high revs, not high, high, about 2,000, 1,800, 2,000. And it's gonna keep you right around seventh or eighth gear. Seventh gear is a one-to-one -one ratio on the 10-speed transmission. But like I said, if you're, if you're doing 80 miles an hour, it might get you in the ninth. But you could always hit the manual button, bump it up in the tent, then hit the manual button again, and it'll keep it there in tent. The other way is tow haul mode. That's gonna keep you in a different range as well because that's what you use when you're hauling a trailer, or towing a trailer or hauling in the back of your truck. The third way is normal mode. Once it shifts into 10th gear, now you don't have to have cruise control on to do that. Once it shifts into 10th gear, just hit the manual button. It's gonna think you're trying to shift gears by you doing it with the button on the side. That's gonna keep it in all eight cylinders and it won't cut them off. It will downshift automatically if you hit the brakes, but in order to upshift, you're gonna to have to hit the button up or you can just hit the M button and, and let it do its shifting until you get to where you need to go. Now, I am working with my four scan guys to find it in the PCM, the address line, so we can turn off the cylinder deactivation. I will let you know if and when we find that. Um, that's one of those things that's very, very hidden. Um, but if and when we do find it, I will definitely let you know. Until the meantime, you can use one of those three ways. Or if it doesn't bother you at all, you can just leave it in normal mode and let it do its thing. So, um, with that being said, I love you guys. Thank you for joining me on this. Um, thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Uh, remember, don't forget, go by the merchandise store, grab you some gloves, grab you a ratchet. Those two items right there will get you a free t-shirt if you add a t-shirt to your cart. Share, subscribe, and I will see you guys on the next one.